It is now time for member statements. I recognize the member for Windsor Tecumseh. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, it's truly my pleasure to rise and pay tribute to the coronation of His Majesty King Charles III and Her Majesty the Queen. People from across Canada, the Commonwealth, and the world took time to watch the ancient ceremony and liturgy of the coronation. It was a remarkable moment for us to reflect on our bond to the Crown and the stability and continuity it represents for Ontario's parliamentary democracy. Indeed, it was the first coronation of a Canadian head of state in seven decades. Constitutional monarchy takes root in the foundation of our political system, and Ontario is a founding province of Canada and the Confederation. To quote the motto included on Ontario's coat of arms, loyal she begins, loyal she remains. On Saturday, families descended on Queen's Park for the Royal Fun Fair, which included carnival rides, live entertainment, and complimentary food and beverages. Across my riding of Windsor Tecumseh and the province, on a beautiful Saturday, people enjoyed the outdoors and took part in celebrations to mark this historic occasion. On behalf of the people of Windsor Tecumseh, I want to take this opportunity to wish King Charles III and Her Majesty Queen Camilla every success and good health in their reign. Long live the King. Member Statements, the member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. Today is a sad day, a day that will go down in the history of our province as the day the Ford government delivered a fatal blow to our treasure Medicare. Today, this Conservative government will say goodbye to care based on needs and come on in to an investor who wants to make money off the back of sick people. Because make no mistake, Speaker, there is a lot of money to be made off of people who are sick, who are desperate for care in the hope of getting better. Investors know that. They know that sick people are at a vulnerable time in their lives, and it is easy to abuse that vulnerability to increase profit. The minister says that we need the changes in Bill 60 to decrease wait time, but look at our hospital job board. There are over 36,000 healthcare job vacancies in our hospitals right now. How are they supposed to recruit when for-profit clinics will offer Monday to Friday job 9 to 5? It will make the wait for hospital care increase tremendously. But the rich and powerful friends of our Premier will have faster access using their credit cards to get to the front of the line while the rest of us hold their hats. To my MPP colleagues, do the right thing. Vote down Bill 60. Statements. The member for Chatham, Kent Leamington. Good morning, Speaker. On Saturday, May 6th, we were privileged to witness a rare moment in history the coronation of our new monarch, His Majesty King Charles III. This special occasion was described beautifully by Her Honour, the Honourable Elizabeth Dowdswell, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, who said, We come together to celebrate the beginning of a new reign, to celebrate the unifying power of the Crown, and to acknowledge a moment of both continuity and change. Although we came from many places, we are united by common values in duty, determination, compassion, respect for diversity, and respect for human rights. Our system of parliamentary democracy, supported by the Crown, is fundamental to our freedoms and our prosperity. As we embrace reconciliation, we are aspiring to do better, especially by one another. These very values were seen in action as the closing of this historic ceremony drew near. Thousands of people and their families from our communities came together to celebrate in the South Lawn of Queen's Park to enjoy fellowship, free amusement rides, and a delicious taste of fresh food produced right here in Ontario. Thanks to the generosity of local commodity leaders and our local businesses. I wish to sincerely thank everyone who volunteered their time on this sunny afternoon in the service of fellow Ontarians. These are a few of the values of our Crown and our King. Long live the King. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Niagara Falls. Thank you very much. The 40 racetrack is a jewel of my community. 
but it's under attack. The Woodbine Entertainment Group is directly targeting the Fort Erie track, hoping to ultimately put it out of business. This behaviour has gone so far that the Fort Erie track has filed a complaint with the Canadian Trade Commission on target anti-competition behaviour from Woodbine. Ontario track, track should be working together for the betterment of horse racing. Woodbine is actively restricting the ability of horses stabled at Woodbine to be eligible to run at Fort Erie. Woodbine refuses to work proactively with Fort Erie in the scheduling of their Triple Crown races, directly ignoring the request of Fort Erie to create a structure that would allow both Triple Crown races to be highlighted in the province of Ontario. And they continue to run B-track level races, even though they receive funding as an A-level track. Woodbine has been granted tens of millions of dollars in purse money from the provincial government. Woodbine uses those government funds and their government granted monopoly on wagering to do whatever they like, ignoring the impact it has on other tracks, making it very difficult for other tracks to achieve their goals or even operate. There's no word other than bullying to describe this behavior. Woodbine is bullying smaller tracks and using their power within this government and their regulatory body to get away with it. It's time this government steps up, puts an end to Woodbine's behavior, and truly supports horse racing across Ontario. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member's statements. The member for Durham. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, too, wish to rise in the House today to acknowledge the coronation of our new sovereign, the King of Canada and the Commonwealth, Charles III, and his wife, Queen Camilla. Saturday, May 6, was Coronation Day, and I was proud to begin the day in my riding of Durham at a coronation breakfast with veterans at the Bowmanville Legion, and that was followed by a wonderful street fest, Maple Fest, right on King Street West in front of my constituency office, where thousands of children and adults were celebrating the Coronation Day and the annual Maple Fest Festival. I was uh, also proud to note that many, many hundreds gathered here at Queen's Park in the South Lawn to join Premier Ford and the Lieutenant Governor in celebration of the Coronation. And while at the Bowmanville, coronation breakfast at the Legion Hall on King Street West, we viewed not only scenes of the coronation from London, England, but also we watched with pride as a lieutenant governor gave her remarks to Ontarians. And I was proud to note that Indigenous leaders were welcomed with an audience with King Charles III on Saturday, along with Governor General Mary Simon. As the member for Windsor Tecumseh noted, Ontario is a founding province of Confederation. Loyal she began, loyal she remains. Long live the King. Thank you. The next statement, the member for London Fanshawe. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to say a, a thank you to a very special person that has contributed so much in making the Legislative Assembly run smoothly, successfully under Todd Decker's watch. November 16, Todd Decker was appointed Clerk of the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. As the Clerk of the House, Mr. Decker is the principal advisor at the table in the Legislative Chamber. He is responsible for ensuring the provision of consistent, expert, confidential and nonpartisan procedural advice and assistance to the Speaker, members of provincial parliament and colleagues in other jurisdictions. Mr. Decker conducts daily procedural briefings with the Speaker as well as weekly presiding officer meetings. In addition to his House duties, Mr. Decker is the Chief Administrative Officer of the Office of the Assembly. In that capacity, he is responsible for strategic planning and development and impl implementation of programs and policy. He is responsible for staff of, a f of 445 employees who provide procedural and administrative support to this House and its committees, including security, building management, library, information services, and educational outreach. Thank you, Todd Decker, for being loyal, hardworking, and bringing your expertise to this place. Congratulations on your retirement and enjoy your newfound freedom. Thank you very much. Member's statements, the member for Niagara West. 
Right Speaker, this past Saturday, Canada joined nations across the Commonwealth in celebrating the coronation of His Majesty King Charles III and Her Majesty the Queen Camilla. Whether in festivities here at Queen's Park to events in Niagara, people across the province celebrated the first coronation of a head of state in the Commonwealth in some 70 years. The prayer of King Charles III, an important element of the liturgy of the coronation service on Saturday, especially spoke to me as a person of faith here at Queen's Park. I quote, God of compassion and mercy, whose son was sent not to be served, but to serve, give grace that I may find in thy service perfect freedom, and in that freedom knowledge of thy truth. Grant that I may be a blessing to all thy children of every faith and conviction, that together we may discover the ways of gentleness and be led into the paths of peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Speaker, this prayer of the King meant a lot to me and I know to many in our land. And I wish to conclude by reiterating the remarks of the Premier at his official statement on the coronation, when he said, quote, As the King officially takes on his new role, I have no doubt that he will build on his mother's legacy of duty, of service, and dedication to his people. On behalf of all Ontarians, I wish King Charles III and the Queen every success in their reign. Speaker, long live the King. God save the King. May the King reign forever. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Guelph. Good morning, Speaker. I rise to thank Wyndham House for the vital work they do in Guelph to support vulnerable youth. I had the honour last week to join Wyndham House, the Mayor of Guelph, the Warden of Wellington County, and community members for a ribbon-cutting ceremony to open an eight-bedroom supportive housing project for youth experiencing homelessness. At the first point-in-time count for homelessness in Guelph in 2014, there were 90 youth experiencing homelessness. That number is now down to five, putting Guelph on track to be the first community in Ontario to end youth homelessness. I want to thank Wyndham House, the city and the county, the provincial and the federal governments and generous donors who supported this project. Studies show that for every $10 invested, in permanent supportive housing, the government saved $21.75 in other costs. More importantly, housing stabilizes and improves people's lives. I'm proud that our community has come together with a Yes in My Backyard campaign, securing support for this housing project and two other permanent supportive housing projects. And I urge the government to increase funding for supportive housing in communities across Ontario because the return on investment is priceless. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. The next member's statement, the member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. I'm delighted today to speak about a momentous occasion that took place last Saturday, the coronation of His Majesty King Charles III and Her Majesty the Queen. Many Ontarians woke up early to witness this historic event that unfolded on our screens. As we witnessed the grandeur and the majesty of this solemn occasion, it was impossible not to feel a sense of awe and wonder. It was a moment of when we were reminded of the rich traditions and history that bind us together as a nation and the connections we share. These connections extend to the city of Stratford and the St. James Anglican Church. As recounted by Reverend Rob Lemon, the church purchased a sizable piece of the magnificent blue carpet that was used during the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. Following a successful application by the Archdeacon Lightburn, the priest at the time, that piece of carpet remains on display to this day in St. James Sanctuary, a physical reminder of our bond to the crown. The coronation served not only as an occasion for celebration and reflection, but is also a reminder of the enduring strength and constancy of our parliamentary democracy and the constitutional monarchy. It's a system of government that has stood the test of time and has endured that our nation remains stable and prosperous. On behalf of the people of Perth Wellington, I wish King Charles and Her Majesty the Queen every success in their reign. May they lead our province, country, and the Commonwealth with wisdom, grace, and strength. Long live the King. Thank you very much. The next member statement, the member for Cambridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Like millions of others around the world, I was honoured to witness the coronation of His Majesty King Charles III. 
and Her Majesty the Queen Court Consort of Westminster, Westminster Abbey on Saturday morning. The historical event marked the first coronation of a Canadian head of state in seven decades. It was a spectacular event. It was also a time to reflect to remember the passing last September of the King's beloved mother, Queen Elizabeth II at the age of 96. May she rest in eternal peace. In my writing of Cambridge, the coronation was celebrated in a variety of ways. Those who were at Churchill Park on Sunday afternoon may have heard the singing of God Save the, the King at South Waterloo Naval Veterans Association, and they gathered for their annual Battle of Atlantic ceremony. Like many landmarks around the world, the Cambridge uh, came out at the City Hall there. It was lit in green to celebrate the pomp and pageantry uh, taking place across the pond. I know of several royal watchers in Cambridge who gathered around their televisions early Saturday morning to witness the crowning of the King and the Queen Corn's consort, as I did also, and to take in the splendor of a once-in-a-lifetime event. Mr. Speaker, Saturday's coronation was a spectacular event in our history as King Charles III completed his 70... Thank you very much. Thank you. Time for member statements has now expired. Introduction of visitors. The Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Is, uh